Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Bruce Broussard. Oh, Bruce. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Hi, George. Thank you very much. I'm back again, if you will. And uh, I'd like to thank Dan, Danny, 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 he there. Donna. Da, Donna, he there. Donna Max. Uh, Max, no, 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 I'm talking about. Uh, oh, Donnie, when he was Donnie, up. Donnie, when he was up, he was here yes. last week. He did an excellent job. Uh, I guess he had Representative Lou Frederick on, wow. and, they, and they spoke. And, and, you know, that's what it's all about, folks. You know, I mean, uh, the idea is to educate and inform. You know, we're, we're living in some very interesting times. And I will say this, Donna is here, Donna Max is here with Race Talk, and, and we're going to really get into a, a conversation about what she does and, and what she's doing and what she's, uh, and what she's about to do again and how, how involved she's in. But before that, we're just going to make small talk a little bit right off the bat in terms of uh, how we've gotten to where we are today and maybe and bring it up today because I think it's a very interesting time. I mean, I can still remember when, when, uh, when Donna and I interviewed the first time around, and, and, uh, and I think the... We also had mentioned at that point in time that uh, we had our first African-American president of these United States and, and what that meant uh, before. And we basically said it, laid it out from the standpoint that we needed to talk about race. Right. And uh, that, that brought it to the table as a result of him, him being elected. Uh, however, uh, and, and we knew that there was going to be some ups and some downs and this, that, and the other, but things were just going fantastic. And then I guess uh, now we're in another term, and boy, I tell you, folks are kind of really upset. And, 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 you know, like what comes to mind is like the, and all of a sudden we're getting into the war thing, the, the North and the South, and, and, um, and we're getting into words, if you will, and, and breaking that down. But that's good. I, I think it's good. I think everything, everything is good right now. But it's just going. We just got about another two more years before we'll we'll get back down to to diversity, true diversity, because there are some issues that are on the table that have come up as a result of that. That a lot of folks are saying, well, this really totally disrupt the family and things of that nature. But the fact of the matter is, we still going to have to carry this thing for the next two years, and that's one of the reasons why I've got Donna here today, who's going to kind of like you know take us through the uh, through the trees, if you will, or the forest, so we can see some light for <laughs> that matter. So we're going to have quite a we're going to have quite a show. I, I hope so. I don't know since I can't since I interrupted you when you were thanking Donnie. So. <laughs> We'll just play this well, by here and see we're, where we're we that go. Point in our life, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. It's okay, Donna. Uh, you know the the thing I would want to would like to also share with you, as you know, I'm I'm always donning this, uh, donning the cap here, identifying the fact that I'm military. We've got quite a midst of um, folks who have retired and this, that, and the other. And, and I could say that one thing about this administration, we there was a focus about uh, military and this, that, and the other background, and we're a little bit more aware. I can still remember. That when I came back from Vietnam, uh, I wasn't received well. You know, I was this, this, that, and the other. But now folks are being recognized, and as it was a result of the Iraqi war and things of that nature. So it's very, very important. And uh, and I guess there's some little things that are out there that, that I've always felt very strong about lobbying, and that is you see a lot of folks that are out there on the streets and this, that, and the other identifying themselves as veterans who are not veterans. But if they are veterans, they should go down to the VA, if you will. And I would like to say to those um, to those family members who are who have uh, vets within their own households or, or relatives or this, that, and the other, they should recognize the fact that a lot of these guys, are, and men and women both, are still having problems, but there are a lot of benefits to be had with them, and you should take them down to the VA. And rather than giving folks money out there that are peddling, saying that they're identified as veteran, pick them up and take them to the VA. You know, and, you know, because in all due respect, a lot of them are just basically either doing in the drug business or the, I mean, basically getting into drugs or, because of because of all of those exploits in the military and this, that, and the other. So, so, so my advice is that uh, tell those those who you are vets, get yourself a cap, no problem with that. Plus, it hides your other part of it too. See, you know what I'm saying? So I understand. So with that, uh, I I want to share that thought with you. But let's get back to Donna. Donna Maxi, welcome. How you doing? Thank you. I'm great. Good, good, good. good. And how, how have you been? And what about mom? Mom still. Mom's hanging in there. She's hanging in there. Ninety-five, gonna outlive you. Did you I heard that. Why don't you say hi to her for sure? Make sure hi, you say. Hi, mom. There you go. Good, good. Make <laughs> sure she sees the show. Donna, Donna's out there. Uh, Donna, uh, again for the benefit of those who are just maybe, uh, just maybe just getting on the show at this point in time, because as you know, we're doing the YouTube and this, that, and the other. Why, why don't we educate them a little bit about what is race taught, how you put this organization together, and what was your rationale for doing so? Okay. Okay. 
It's, it's interesting that you said that President Obama's uh, election started the discussion about race, and actually, um, it started for for me before that, mm -hmm. before he was um, elected. Uh, Portland Public Schools started um, working with a book called Courageous Conversations in Race, mm -hmm. and it was written by Glenn. Okay, I just went blank. Okay, that's okay. We're at that point, like I said, no problem. Okay, I'm not going to tell you Glenn's last name. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Uh, Singleton, Glenn Singleton okay. and, and uh, Curtis Linton. And the book was very amazing. It was an, uh, a, introduced and people were able to read the book and be a part of a study group if it was voluntary. Mm -hmm. And um, then we decided, they decided that they liked this and they wanted it to be mandatory because they were aware by the year 2040, there would be more people of color than there were white people in the United States, and we needed to be talking to each other. And so um, this book is really great. It has some conditions and, and uh, some platitudes, for lack of a better word, that, it, that are accepted so that you understand that we're talking about race and that white, white is a race, mm -hmm. although we know that white is not a race. Yeah, there's there's only the yeah, human yeah, race. Yeah. Uh, there are nationalities, mm -hmm. and here in the United States, we don't discuss nationality an awful lot, uh, and that dates back to the slavery times, um, when, when we had, um, when there were more slaves. Mm -hmm. If you have free slave labor, then you have more slaves than you have the white people who are doing the overseeing. And some of those and, slaves were whites also, too. Well, slaves. when slavery first started, slavery was um, indentured, right, in, right, indentured right. slaves. And uh, many of the slaves originally were, were white, had yeah. come over from Europe, mm -hmm. and were, had to work for five years for no pay, and many of them were, were black, too. Mm -hmm. But um, then they decided that they were going to switch it over, that the indentured servants, you know, slaves, cost mm -hmm. too much, and so they were just going to go full, full out with with Africans, and actually they started trying to uh, enslave the Indians, but the Indians in the winter were too close to the color of the white people, so they mm. couldn't tell them easily. Mm. And the Africans, on the other hand, were much darker, so you, at a distance you could tell who they were, and it was very much easier to uh, spot them. So um, so they switched over to Africans, and mm. in, the, in the process, we'll, will steal your people and steal your land too. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing that was done here in the United States to the native uh, population here. So um, in, in any event, the book, Courageous Conversations in Race, was brought about. I was at um, Cesar Chavez School, which was one of the beacon schools in Portland Public Schools, and we were one of the first, and we brought it back to our staff. And we had a person on our staff who was had difficulty understanding issues of race mm -hmm. and sometimes issues of personality that had nothing to do with race. And um, But I noticed when we presented this program that this person got it. This person was able to step outside of their own personality mm -hmm. and understand the issues and, and to explain them to others mm -hmm. and defend what was going on, I thought. There is power in this. Mm -hmm. There is power in this, and this needs to be taken to the general public. And um, had no thoughts about race doing anything until um, I think it was 2010 that Tim Hills, who was historian of McMenamin's Kennedy School, invited me to come and speak at um, at a history pub, mm -hmm. and that came from initially inviting a group of people, and you remember Chris Poole. Mm -hmm. um, Chris is very active in the community and um, one of my Delta Sorors, and she invited me to come be a part of a group that had grown up in the community, and McMinimans had just moved into the Chapel Pub. So they wanted to know what was the history of the community, what were some things, you know, that That's happened. That's one in Northeast Portland, right? Right, right, the one, yeah. right, right there yeah. by the uh, North Branch Killingsworth right. mm -hmm. Library. So. He was, it, it was very interesting because when I was speaking up, several people who were at that event where we were speaking with Tim said, you're kind of putting it out there. And I said, 
I'm telling the truth. I'm going to speak the truth now. If they can't handle the truth, then don't ask the question. Mm -hmm. But this is what happened here in Portland. And so I'm telling the truth. And from that, he remembered me and wanted me to come and speak at the History Pub. And so the topic of the History Pub was urban renewal, ur uh, urban removal. Um, and okay. the removal okay. of African Americans here mm -hmm. in, in uh, Portland and the history of it. And so um, we had several people who spoke. Uh, there was a college professor who, a couple of college professors who talked about the, the paperwork, mm -hmm. you know, that went, went on with, with um, the PDC and, and the, what is it, I'm trying, just went blank on that, uh, development, Portland Development Commission, which I found out later is a group of voluntary businessmen, mm -hmm. four or five businessmen mm -hmm. uh, appointed by the mayor. Yeah, Neil and Kelly was one, was very one of the prominent ones that I knew of. Tom Walsh and folks like that. Yeah, yeah. That particular and time, so yeah. the PDC makes decisions about how the city mm -hmm. will look mm -hmm. 40, 50 years in the future. And if you look in your newspaper every so often, you will see that the PDC is meeting and they're making decisions about some year in the future and that's how those things happen is you know which is how people are able to buy um, they've already designated a particular area to go for apartments all this building that's going on now mm -hmm. this was designated 40 50 years ago right, 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 so right, this right. is this is not new that's how people were able to be in place to make it happen but mm -hmm. what they always do when they're doing that kind of change is they let the, the property values drop. Mm -hmm. And they usually move poor people, people of color, mm -hmm. into those communities. And that's a history there, too, that we hopefully one day oh, yes. will discuss. Yes, that's, a, that's an interesting history. Um, Dr. Karen Gibson has mm -hmm. that one down tight. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I shared the heart and soul story of it. What it felt like as a child um, and what happened to our family, to our community, um, the fact that there are some people in I haven't seen in 50 years. That Portland, Portland, Oregon. Here in right, Portland, yeah, yeah, right, they're yeah. still here, but I haven't seen them in 50 years. So, um, <laughs> but we were friends on the same street, lived across the street from each other. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that just rips your heart out because Portland was, a, the African American community was very close. Um, so people were impressed by the presentation and kept calling Tim and mm -hmm. saying that was very moving and inspiring and I knew my Toastmasters had paid off mm -hmm. so um, I asked him what did he plan to do because he kept calling me and telling me you know it, this is what it was and he mm -hmm. says I said well have you thought about what you're going to do with this upswelling of, of, of concern and and he said, no, I haven't thought about it. I said, well, I have. <laughs> so here's what I think we need to do. So uh, I brought the idea to him and, and brought in uh, Maceo Pettis with the Un Uniting to Understand Racism Maceo, group. Yeah. And we took off and we started um, February. Our first event was February of 2011. So we started meeting at McMinniman's Kennedy School. Tim was quite amazed. He figured we might have maybe 50 people mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. we were like maybe 25. Mm -hmm. And so um, I said, no, we're going to have more people than that. I, I have a network of people. Mm -hmm. So he was stunned when we had about 85 people who mm -hmm. showed up. And in addition to the 85, we had about 25 people of colors of all different ethnicities. And he was just flabbergasted mm -hmm. because they had never had a crowd that large of people of color at McMinimins before. So that, you know, we didn't start with this is going to be, it was kind of nebulous how we started. You know, there was no understanding about this is going to be ongoing forever and always, but we're going into our fifth. And you were, were retired now from the Portland Public Schools, right? Not at that time. At that time? You not were still, you were still, still teaching. teaching. Okay. So okay. I retired at the end of that school mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Um but yes, it was. It was. It's been very successful. And how did the school district? Did they embrace you when you? Were, you, the were they district, part of the discussions when you were putting this thing together? No, they were not. No, mm -hmm. they were not. Um, in fact, it wasn't until a couple of years later that I started a second race talks, at um, because people were asking for repeats of the mm -hmm. of the topics, and so I started a re second race talks, and spoke to Portland Public Schools Office of Equity, and they have been supportive. And so they've been a sponsor. Who was that era during that particular time? Uh, who was the who was the superintendent at that point in time? Uh, 
Carol Smith. Carol Smith. Was. Carol Smith. Oh, she really? has she has been. I'm. I have to say that I have seen a huge change in Portland Public Schools mm. under her term. Um, she has done an excellent job of being open and talking to people. Um, she's from a diverse background herself, um, not ethnically diverse, but gender diversity, <laughs> and um, and I think it makes her more open. Uh, she also was principal over at Open Meadows, which is an alternative high school, and a lot of kids of color end up at Open Meadows. <laughs> so I think she has an understanding and a heart for all kinds of people. And again, that that's another conversation. You got my point? Because, uh, again, all due respect, I, I've, I've wanted her to come on the show, and, and in fact, I need to sit down and chat with her anyway, because my whole mindset, I'm in transition when it comes to, uh, to the whole uh, issue of ginger. You know, it's an educational process, you got my point? Right. And it's not part of the instruction, <clears throat> just like we're talking about the issue of race and this, that, and the other, and, and identifying cultures and and making sure that the cultures are part of the participation of the education system within our system. That's one of the problems that we're having, if you will. And so I'm throwing that whole ginger piece. I'm, I'm having that piece, even from Carolyn's standpoint. I just need to know a little bit better, because my whole thing is that the, the mindset is that it's sort of like a, I, I use the word no man's land, because someone had talked to me about that. But anyway, the, the whole idea is that during those formative years, in my thought, during the, for a lot of people, is that during those formative years, their standards and all Americans, regardless of what is, you know, how diverse they are, should be getting a, a basic education, the basics, if you will. And then after a certain period of time, they've done that, then they're out on their own and they can do anything they want to do. Now that's just a thing. Well, thought. I, I understand. That's another as, discussion. As one who has taught, who taught <laughs> 35 plus years, um, the truth of the matter is that your average teacher is a white female mm -hmm. who teaches five years. Mm -hmm. So they're young, they're inexperienced, many times they are, uh, especially in the inner city, not from that community. Mm -hmm. um, it's a different story when African Americans were in a segregated um, time, because at that time the people who were the most learned and knowledgeable in the African American community could not get jobs out in the white community that had paid more money. So those were the people who were the teachers. These people, some of these people, I, I think about Dunbar High School in Washington D.C. Most of their staff had PhDs. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the curriculum and what they were teaching at that time to the students, it far exceeds what students are getting now. But the educational level of the people teaching it mm -hmm. far exceeds, as well as the life experience. What about curriculum, though? Again, that's the other thing, too. The curriculum, if you will, as far as African Americans or other people of color, that was not inclusive, like, you know, Hispanics or whatever. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? Hum a few more bars. Well, you know, from the standpoint of the history of blacks, you know, we, we do it on Black History Month and... You know, I mean, that kind of stuff, but we don't, it's not part and parcel of the educational system like they do other groups. Uh, well, part of the problem with curriculum is that um, the curriculum is, is a numbers game. And whoever has the most okay. books that they are asking to be printed, mm -hmm. then, which in this case, happens to be Texas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Texas has the largest number of books that they ask for. So Texas dictates what's in those textbooks. Around the country? Around the country. Really? Boy, that's, yes. a, that's a good thing. Yes. You brought something out there. So Texas oh, dictates gee. what's in the books. And, and what I thought was interesting is that if you look in the textbooks, there's very little in there about slavery. Mm -hmm. uh, there's right. no mention of African Americans. Now, Texas is in the South, right? Well, I thought so. Well, I might I'm be just, wrong. Just, okay, I mean, I'm so, just, you know. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out. I had heard that. I'm trying to figure out this, you know, this north and south thing. So now I understand. I, I had heard that. I'm understanding that. So, um, so Texas, if people want textbooks that are different from what Texas is asking mm -hmm. and demanding mm -hmm. because they're paying for so many of them, mm -hmm. then they have to pay for them separately. Think back to your college years. There were some books that cost just a few dollars. Right. And then there were others at the time, for instance, now there, you could get a book that was $350, $400 because it hasn't had very many printed. So in, it's a numbers game. Interesting. And Interesting. so to have your curriculum you need and save as much money as possible, you need to have cheaper books. 
Mm. And you keep those books for a period of seven years. Mm. Well, Texas has made a decision. Interesting. And there's not a whole lot in there about diversity. And truth be told, if the if the textbooks were written as should be, mm -hmm. what actually happened in history, then we wouldn't need a Black History Month. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's we right. don't have a White History that's Month. Right, that's right. That's right. That's but we're teaching history every yeah, month, yeah. so well, you you don't have a Native American mm -hmm. month. You don't have you know you wouldn't need a his a, a Latino month. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't need an Asian month. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's another story. Asian people didn't become Asian till they became to this till they came to this country. Hmm. Before they came here, they were Indians, Cambodians, mm -hmm. Thai, mm -hmm. Japanese, Chinese. They came from their country of origin. But once they came to this country, as is, as is what the USA is prone to do, they just lumped them all together. Oh, okay, all of you are mm -hmm. Asians. Mm -hmm. From the majority sense back then. Yes, the majority, the majority, yes. The majority right, rules, right, and right, so right. that's what happened. Will we get to that inclusion? When, when do you think we're going to get to that inclusion? I During think, our lifetime? I think it's dependent upon whenever the aliens come. Interesting. When aliens come, then all of a sudden, people are going to quit looking at color and look for another human. Mm. Maybe that's why I'm having such a difference. I am an alien. I've now figured out exactly <laughs> why. <laughs> no, but I'm serious. I'm, I'm serious. When something that causes, that is greater than yeah. the differences we have, yeah. Yeah. comes yeah. in and people feel threatened. Good point. Good then point. they will, you know, they're not going to be looking for, is this a white hand or a yeah. black hand yeah. that's pulling yeah. me up and yeah. saving me? They're going to yeah. be looking for a human hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's another discussion. We want to have put that one too and chuck that up, will you? Okay. We're going to do that, folks. We're going to do another piece on that. But now I want to get into these other areas. Let's get back to Race Talk, this organization you put together, and let's maybe throw out some of the highlights of some of the things that you've done that you thought were that really had some significance. Well, the first year we did Race Talks, we had we talked about issues of we introduced race in a general sort of way. Mm -hmm. Um, the first, the actual first program was called Beyond the Oregon Trail. It's a curriculum that was, uh, speaking of curriculum, it was a mm -hmm. curriculum that was written by Uniting to Understand Racism for Portland Public Schools for eighth graders. And it's a six week, I think it's a six to eight week program that talks about people who came to Oregon on the Oregon Trail that were not white. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's very involved, um, you know, go, goes into depth. I mean, we've all heard about, oh gosh, I just went blank on the brother's name. He carried people across, there's a pass, I want to say it's called Dun, Dunthorpe or Dunbar Pass or something like that. Anyway, it's an African American man who was a scout and led people over this pass through the mountains. Part the of the history of the state. Part of the history of, of yeah. Of Oregon. Yes. So, and there were, uh, you know, and plus Oregon had exclusion laws and all, so mm -hmm. it talks yeah, right. about all of Good. those okay. things. So that was our first one. The first year was generally, in, uh, you know, uh, we did one about African Americans and about Latinos, about Asians, about Muslim, the Muslim Arab mm -hmm. uh, community. Um, and so just in general, some general topics like that. And then the second year we talked about what is race. Mm -hmm. Um, we did a program along with OMSI. OMSI had, um, I just went blank on the name of the program that it was, but it was an exhibition that was all around the country mm -hmm. and talked about what is race and how does it occur and, and they had, uh, and it was kind of a kickoff to their exhibition mm -hmm. so that people would know that it was there and, you know, and it talks about melanin and, and What's the difference? For instance, you and I are both African Americans, but I'm darker complexion than you are. Mm -hmm. So that means I have my melanin is closer together than yours. We all have melanin. Mm -hmm. It's like pennies on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. The lighter you are, the fewer drops of melanin you have on here. Mm -hmm. The darker you are, the closer together, mm -hmm. the more drops of melanin mm -hmm. you have. Numbers. That's it. That is <laughs> strictly it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, below the skin, it's not very different. Now, there are some sociological issues that come up and one of the topics we have was unnatural causes mm -hmm. and um, talking about the stress that occurs with racism in this country and um, I, I think one of the topics that brings it out best was that African women came to this country African American women tend to have smaller children my child 
was born at five, 15 and a half pounds. Mm -hmm. The average baby, baby is about seven and a half, eight pounds. So, um, and, and I was doing everything that you're supposed to do. I was eating tons of meat. I was eating a half a pound of meat a day. And I'm, I'm not a big meat eater, but it was half, I had to eat half a pound of meat a day. I had to take iron tablets. I had to rest every day. I mean, all these things I had to do. And that only got the kid up to not quite six pounds. <laughs> so... Um, what they have found is that African women who came to this country when we had an influx of Africans coming, that their women, the African women's babies were born at this, within the same weight range as white babies in this country. But a curious thing occurred, and what they found is that after being here for five years, that African women's babies dropped in size also. Mm. So the only thing they could chalk it up to and they did some studies it was the stress of racism hmm. Hmm. interesting it's the stress of racism and so there you know if you look across the board in terms of disease in terms of high blood pressure asthma um, diabetes these are these are diseases that are s somewhat stress induced mm -hmm. And people of color tend to have them much higher than. Does sickle whites. cell fit in that same piece? Sickle cell is a different story. Okay. Sickle cell was um, was a a genetic change that occurred in the Mediterranean area. Mm -hmm. um, malaria was mm -hmm. killing off a lot of people, and what happened is that the body developed a sickle, and some kind of way with the blood cell developing a sickle shape the malaria didn't kill you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's how sickle cell became prominent among Africans on the east coast of Africa mm -hmm. and also Greeks and other Greek Spaniards, people who are in that Carib... Um, I just went blank on the name of the sea. Over there in um, that part of the... It's not the Black Sea. I can see it just good and went blank on the name of the sea. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you know what I'm speaking There's a red of. sea one, okay. Okay. No, not the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. Anyway, anyway, right. I haven't right. see you caught me off on that one. Okay. I went, but I haven't brought that one up in That's years. That's all right, Donna. You know, we're we're a wisdom kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so right, this year at, at Race Talks, we have um, here. I'd like to share. with well, you. We're going to do that. We're going to get that in the second okay. half of the deal. I just okay. want to. I want to give them an introduction. I also want to make let let them know also too that you're also on YouTube. They yes. can Google you. They can Google Race Talk, right? Right. And there's Donna. And some of the things that she was talking about, and all of her, most of her shows were were basically videotaped, right? Yes. So they're on YouTube, and you can even share those, no right. problem. Maybe in the future, we might be able to link you with Oregon Voters Digest, and then maybe get the, get my crowd to get together with yours. All you see right. what I'm saying? Sounds so good. I think it's a very very important piece. So what we're going to do? We got about we got about a half a minute here. We're going to go. We're going to take a short break, and uh, we're going to we're going to maybe now get into more current events all right like maybe a little ferguson a uh, little ferguson a little some of that and and maybe about the use of word nigger you know, figure out what that's all about and then the whole idea that don't shoot peace if people want to know what that was what's going on about that piece works for me and i understand you're going to be doing some things i'm talking from a local perspective too. yes we are okay we're going to take a short break folks we'll be right back with donna i think it's going to be very exciting go, go out and get your coffee and your and your, let's see your peanuts and popcorn and whatever and be ready for the second half it's going to be great take care You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
right. Welcome back, folks. Okay, Donna, we're just having a small <laughs> chat here. We had about another 30 minutes in the break, but the whole idea has been great. Hey, look, um, and, and for those of you who m might have missed the show, you can get it, get it on YouTube or you can get it on there. The, they put the schedule on and let you know just exactly when you can see it again here at Comcast. And um, so now what we're going to do is that we're going to get into something current, try to maybe talk to some of the things that folks are being presented. A lot of folks don't look at the, they don't read the newspaper, they don't look at the news, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But these are some current stuff right now. Again, again, all due respect, thanks to uh, President Obama, we're able to talk about the issue of race. And we won't, we're, not going to, we're not going to stop talking about race until another two years or so. <coughs> so some I there, hope we don't stop then. But then I don't know. I, you're right, because right now, that's the, I think they're thinking that he's still running for president. There are some folks that are still thinking about that. But anyway, that's just a little side note. But let, let's talk about here locally. Now, race talks, you're getting, ready to, you're getting ready to have another race talks to community police forum to improve relationships. Come give your input. Be a part of the solution in Portland. <laughs> Forums are from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., including panel discussions and breakout sessions. Tuesday, April the 7th at Franklin High School Cafeteria, 5405 Southeast Woodward Street. Monday, May 4th, Grant High School Cafeteria, 2245 Northeast 36th Avenue. Wednesday, June 3rd, Wilson High School Cafeteria, 1151 Southwest Ver Vermont, Vermont Street. And then I guess the forms are offered by the Portland Police Bureau in partnership with Albina Miller Storyline Alliance, City of Portland's Human Rights Commission, and Community Police Reform Committee, Race Talks, and Portland Public Schools. Boy, this, this is quite a poster here. You're getting some support for a change. I I've always, tell. I've always had support. You get support. I've always, always had support, had, well, and you, I appreciate that. Well, we want to make sure we get this and out to public. And you too. Well, hey, I, hey, by the way, hey, show them the poster. We need to do something. Well, that's what that's why I read it. I think they might, have, they might see, they might see the poster, poster right there. Can we, can we see that poster? I'll just put that right there, real quick, like that, and they'll just go to check it out for us on a real quick note there. Okay, good. I'll, I'll hold that right there for these guys. Just a moment there. We're getting it. We'll be, we'll get it. Want to do it that? Oh, that's good. There you go. There we go. There the race talks. Uh, I just read that whole piece, okay? And what we'll do, we'll, we'll do something a little bit later on in terms of announcing the fact where this happens or whatever. And throw out a phone number, for instance, they can call. Okay. You got a phone number? I do. Okay. 971-222-8254. Okay, okay. 971-222-8254. If you want any information or background, as well, you can call Portland Public Schools. They pretty, they pretty well know what the schedule is, right? They know. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, let's let's go back and talk about some of the other little other stuff that's set on the t table now on the whole issue of race. Uh, I know it's a country kind of a thing, but from an Oregon standpoint, it's the impact it has. This whole of Ferguson. Anything you want to say about the Ferguson thing? What do you think about that piece? They came out with the "Don't Shoot" thing routine or whatever. Well, part of the issue with Ferguson, I, it, several years ago, I went back to St. Louis and I was back there for about I stayed about 17 days. Okay. And I w was um, able to go all over the community, and I was really stunned mm -hmm. by St. Louis because I, I think of Portland as being not very progressive in terms of communities of color mm -hmm. and not progressive in the sense that there aren't that many of us. And so, so the, the strides that we would make would be less than say in a community where there are a lot more people of color okay. to support okay. whatever we're doing. And so I was shocked to find that there were so few African Americans and other people of color in positions of power. Um, and and kind of, it, it, it was still very much a we we think of portland as having we used to think of portland as having quote a ghetto portland does not have no, a ghetto no, no, we no, ha we no, we have no, never had a ghetto no, no. we've had a black community mm -hmm. but we haven't had a ghetto mm -hmm. and and i saw there a lot of of disparity tremendous disparity between the haves and the have nots mm -hmm. and it has been a traditional thing and you know, just some of the things, the stories I was hearing about what was going on in the schools and how students were behaving and a lot of the acting out that was occurring. And what people don't think about, I, I think this country has become very 
talked a lot about PTSD, mm-hmm. yeah. post-traumatic yeah. stress disorder. Yes, yeah, stress. Well, I always, uh, I think it was Joy Leary who, Dr. Joy Leary, who called it post-traumatic slave syndrome. Oh. Um, you know, slave disease, and and when you have a people who have been enslaved. And there's a difference between being a slave and being enslaved. These were people who were independent and proud and, and the progenitors of culture in the world, period, mm-hmm. who were captured and enslaved. Mm-hmm. So when you have people who are put in those kind of circumstances, then they develop stresses. And you have generation upon generation of people being born from this. And I think the, the movie 12 Years a Slave did a great job of tipping, you know, just the tip of the iceberg of what how cruel slavery was. I mean, it, it doesn't, you know, one of the things I can throw out is uh, the idea of gator baiting. They used to take um, black women's babies and use them to, to hold them out over the water to bait mm-hmm. alligators mm-hmm. so that they could capture them and kill them. Mm-hmm. Babies frequently were killed or they were hung by a... A rope over the water, you know, mm-hmm. um, how slave women were lined up and somebody was split stem to stern and the baby stomped on and, you know, saying, if you try to escape, this is what will happen to you and your baby. Mm-hmm. So you have this kind of thing happening um, and the children being terrified in utero. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things that no one ever talks about, we know that black women were raped. I mean, the fact that the African-American community looks like a rainbow speaks to mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. But nobody talks about what happened to the men. Because when you're abusing power, you're not just saying, oh, well, we're just going to abuse the women. Mm-hmm. No, abuse happens to many people, and it happens to men and boys as well. Mm-hmm. But nobody talks about mm-hmm. that. And that's a topic that probably will never get discussed. But it should be. It should be well, within the educational system. I mean, that's what that's what this is all about. Like you're saying, why should we have Black History Month when we can, if we talked about this stuff and it was actually in our educational system, talk to Texas. You know, what I mean, you know, there's a possibility you might be able to get to the former governor or well, the governor over there now. But anyway, okay. I, mean, I just I just jumped, I diverted for just for a moment or two. When it, but these let's talk about these, this deal. But Ferguson, but what do you, Ferguson, what do you what, what Ferguson do you is, is it's clearly a state. Uh, uh, Missouri is clearly a state, it's supposed to have been a border state, but it's clearly a state that has had a very seriously racist and biased and limited opportunity for people of color. But if, but if the population, it, 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 was, it was indicated, it was said that, that the majority of the population was black. The majority of the population so what's, is. what happened to the electorate? Uh, what happens is that when you have people in power, the, the power structure lies with the white community. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's kind of like during, by 2040, there'll be more people of color than there are white people. Uh, Folks aren't just going to roll over and go, okay, here's the money, here's the power. You'll notice that there is a greater discrepancy now than there was 50 years ago between the very wealthiest and the poorest. And that happens. That even happens here, even though it's a small community. It it happens happens everywhere. I mean, all over the United States, this is happening, and and in the world. So this is not an accident. This is very much planned. All the things that we see occurring in music and and, in movies, Mm -hmm. all of these are very intentionally Mm -hmm. planned Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to have an impact socially. So... If, if you look at the United States, here in the United States, every two days, two Afri- every day, two African Americans are killed by the police. Mm. Every day. Mm. Mm. So that's no, that's no coincidence. Okay, let's get, let's get another piece. And we're going to spend more, by the way, we're going to spend more time. I mean, she's got so much to say, folks. I'll tell you right up front within, hopefully we'll try to encourage her to come here at least once a month to come out here and kind of <laughs> share some of the thoughts. But like I said, you do have access to the YouTube <clears throat> A lot of that material is sitting on YouTube, and, and, and then again, if you can join her in some of her forums, that would be fantastic. And We'd then we love have to access. Have people come. So maybe you can see if we can get the media there. And they, unless you're doing something negative, they, they just won't show up sometime. Sorry, we're not doing anything negative. I, I know that. I know you're doing something educational and informative. <coughs> I appreciate that very much. Now, the, the, the other piece that came out I thought was interesting because I've been, I've been looking at some of the national news uh, commentators and whatever. When the word nigger came out all of a sudden, you know, this back on the table aspect of it. And uh, there was a discussion about 
Um, well, we see it brought this one piece up, and and I noticed that one of the one of the main moderators, uh, who happens to have been black, was talking about this, and he had no problem with the word being. He got a buddy of his on on the show, and then they said, well, yeah, you know, there's nothing wrong with nigger, you know what I mean? And they had another guy. They were having this discussion, and and they used a term that, in all due respect, I've heard many times over, back when I came from down south, where you my nigger. You know, and and people even use that term today to a certain mm -hmm. degree. But what do you think about that discussion? Should we have that discussion on the word nigger? And, and w w what should we do with the word nigger? Because you hear all kinds of things. I mean, I've even heard things about you got brown. They, they use uh, they call Hispanics sometimes uh, brown niggers, and then red niggers, and yellow niggers. I mean, well, what, what, what's the deal? What do we do with the word nigger? It, I think it personally should be eradicated from okay. our language because I don't think it, so it do has too many emotional for I know for me personally right, right, right. Um, I think I have said the word before right. but it's not one I say frequently right. it is one that I would never use with right. white people okay. Okay. I don't want to open that can of worms right. and I understand that the young people are saying this is a word that has had a negative effect on us and our community and so we're going to take the power from it and it's mm -hmm. called that's called repatriation mm -hmm. where you where you take a word that has a negative connotation mm -hmm. and change it around um, I first became aware of this during the Cosby show days of um, of a different world mm -hmm. when they did a program um, where about color and it was a young I think the actress character's name was Cheryl. She was dark complexion. Mm -hmm. And she was being made to feel badly about her dark mm -hmm. complexion. Beautiful girl, smooth skin, just mm -hmm. gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Dark complexion. Mm -hmm. And so what they did is they did a, a skit for all the kids in this dorm. Mm -hmm. And she came out dressed as Mammy. And had a, a tie on her head. And, and she just was huge, you know, mm -hmm. because the African women were were large mm -hmm. mainly because they were wet nurses mm -hmm. which that's another thing there's a, i saw a p picture recently of a of a black woman a slave woman who was breastfeeding a white child yeah, yeah. the same white child she could not in. drink from mm -hmm. a cup from mm -hmm. nor at from the same drinking mm -hmm. fountain and mm -hmm. who would later come back and mm -hmm. dominate her but for right now well, milk is milk though you yeah know. <laughs> really? Hmm. I thought black people had chocolate milk. Oh, okay, okay, anyway, okay. so um, I'm being facetious, so no don't problem, get any no phone problem. calls in here. Okay. So, um, so anyway, she had on this huge dress, mm -hmm. and from underneath her came the character Whitley, who's very light complexion, and Whitley was a biracial child mm -hmm. who was born of Mammy and the slave master. Mm -hmm. And then there was another child who came from that and and so on until it came to a present day young woman, Jada Pinkett, mm -hmm. who played Freddie. I think mm -hmm. her name was Freddie in the in the in the she was very angry and from the inner city mm -hmm. her character was. And she talked about how you're not gonna hold us captive anymore with that word mm -hmm. uh, or, or or with our image. Mm -hmm. We're doing it. And if you notice in a lot of homes, African American homes, that we're co collecting things like watermelons, mm -hmm. the mammy, salt shakers, sugar bowls, yeah. all yeah. of these yeah. things. Yeah. So it has taken some of the sting out of it by us taking it over and claiming it as ours. It it was ours. Mm -hmm. Just it wasn't ever negative. Mm -hmm. It was made to be negative. Mm -hmm. So the young people are taking it as re repatriation, and and um, and I understand that. The problem is the is that they had a rapper on uh, Don Lemon's show, and and uh, I watched his show, and I have to make a comment about Don Lemon on CNN. Yes, that's who was having that discussion. Yes, and and. I used to really enjoy his program. I no longer watch his program. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I noticed, it seems, and it might be a coincidence of timing, but it seems like after he came out as and, and announced that he was gay, mm -hmm. that his programming changed. Mm -hmm. So now his programming seems to be a lot of negative take on the African-American community. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if there was a trade-off that was done mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm, you get mm -hmm. to come out and be gay, mm -hmm. and so now this is what you have to do, or, or what happened? But I just find it quite an interesting coincidence mm -hmm. that this has occurred. But in any event... Um, what did we do about that piece? 
Uh, there, have, was a, there was a there was a rapper named Trinidad James, mm -hmm. as well as a guy. I think his name was Jay Snow, an African American male, mm -hmm. and uh, a, a white guy named um, Ben Ferguson. And Ben said something that I thought was interesting. He said, "It's a word that's hurting people's lives." And I thought that word is not hurting people's lives. Racism is mm -hmm. hurting yeah. people's yeah. lives. Yeah. That word is representative mm -hmm. of the racism mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. racist system mm -hmm. that is in this country. So the word is being used by the powers that be and the ruling class mm -hmm. to degradate and hold people down. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really interesting. Um, in the 60s, we had James Brown playing, you know, singing, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Yeah, right. And now we have, you know, and everyone was dressed in suits and well-mannered yeah. mm -hmm. and, and, and educated, mm -hmm. at, trying to act sophisticated mm -hmm. and educated. Mm -hmm. Now we have young men with... Um, what do you call those things on their teeth? Gold, grills. Gold grills. Yeah, yeah okay. you know, the grills yeah, yeah, and yeah, all yeah. the chains, yeah, 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 pants yeah, hanging yeah, down on their behinds. Yeah. They're using tons of profanity. And, and, and by the way, Dawn interviewed the, the rapper that did Right, Trinidad James. Yeah, yeah, Trinidad James. Yeah. And, and, um, and he came on and he spoke, and he's very intelligent. Yeah. He's very intelligent and well-spoken. And it really... And so I looked up his, his tape afterwards because I haven't heard his song. So I looked it up afterwards and I thought, I had, you know, I had to go back and look again. This is the same person. He did not look the same. He did not talk the same. He did not act the same. Making that so this is, well, but see, what has happened is that you get these young kids who are living in the ghetto, never had any money. They're living in violent yeah. environments. Yeah. And they want to make, it's the American dream it's, it's to make right, that money. Right, yeah, but yeah. what they're doing is they're selling their souls in order to be mm -hmm. able to do that. So what do we do? Well, do I we think... we find we, a person? I mean, we, we've, got, we've got all of the, uh, what, what do you call it, the, the technical gadgets we have with the phones and whatever, and the smartphones and stuff. Can we take photos or uh, maybe find a person if you... If, you, if a person may, says the word, I mean, it may cost you 50 bucks or something. Well, I, I understand. I haven't been to England, out. but yes. I, have, I understand in England that if a person uh, does a racist behavior, that mm -hmm. they get fined. They get fined. Yes, there's a huge fine. Okay. You is know, it, over $1,000. Have you noticed it? Has it helped the cause? Well, or? according to the person who I know that lived there, uh, she said that it... It, it made a lot of difference. Really? You know, when you hit people in the pocketbook, oh, yeah. well, that's, you, you yeah. can legislate a lot of change uh, if it costs money. Like running a stop sign. You I'm know, telling you. If you get caught, you, you got to pay. Absolutely. Right? Right? So, yeah. so do I think, I, I think there are two things that will help to stop uh, a lot of this behavior, this, okay. which one is, um, well, there's, there's several things, but one it is that you have you find people mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. money talks and what about the education system why not teach it in school from the standpoint that you shouldn't use the word well it is taught it that is, is taught in school yeah. that is taught in school but the problem uh, is that but when again, they go home mom and dad's using it well <laughs> what do we do then we have to change people's hearts and we have mm -hmm. to learn for people people have to, this is part of why we have race talks is for people to learn to talk to each other um i th I thought that the problem was be a, a matter of, of racial divide, and I found out I live out in a community that I thought would have a large uh, community of color and found mm -hmm. out that there are not that many people. Mm -hmm. There is a small community of mm -hmm. color, but it's isolated. Mm -hmm. And on my street, it's mostly white people. Yeah. I think yeah. there's one other black person. That person doesn't speak to me. So, you know, I'm waving, saying mm -hmm. hi, mm -hmm. shh, going by. Mm -hmm. And so... I found out after living there a short while, I thought, well, those people aren't, these people aren't very friendly. And then I found out they're not friendly with each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of people don't know their neighbors. Yeah. They don't talk to their neighbors. That's across the board. Absolutely. That's across the board. Has, it's not, it's not, it has nothing to do with the so-called black community, by the way. I, I have another No, this term was the white community white that community. Was, was doing that. Yeah, and I think yeah. the black community, that's one of the things that I loved about growing up here in Portland, because we knew who our neighbors yeah. were. We'd been in their home. They'd been in our home. Well, um, the thing I, I think a lot of times, and I've sort of, I'm, I'm the same boat, so to speak, but when I came here, I saw it not as a black community, but a community where a number of the 
resident happened to have been black. Right. There's a difference. You went yes. out in Chicago in the South, you had actually black communities, but you didn't have, you never had a black community here in Portland, Oregon. Right. You, you understand what I'm saying? Right. The, because it was never, I don't think, yeah, yeah. Um, I remember there was the census taken and there was not one single block that had all yeah, black people yeah. living on it, one square block. But when they, when they applied for those, uh, those checks, those government checks, uh, there, there, was, there was a black community. Right. To get the money. Right. Right. You got me? Oh, oh I know. And, and it was divided according to, just like when you were talking about PCC, Portland Community uh, Development, not, not PCC, but uh, Portland Development, PDC. The whole idea was to create homes, if you will, right. home ownership in the black community. But that never happened. But anyway, right. that's another discussion we'll have. Predatory loans. Yes. Predatory yes. loans. So anyway, Trinidad James, um, I found this interesting. There was a, a couple of videos shown. One was of the S uh, Sigma Alpha Epsilon right. fraternity doing the chant. Mm -hmm. And then there was one of, I think it was a, a SAE, SAE house mother, mm -hmm. older yeah. white woman yeah. in her yeah. 70s. And yeah. she was, his oh, song yeah. was oh, playing yeah. in the background yeah. and she oh, yeah. looks like she's yeah. kind of yeah. drunk and yeah. she's yeah. Right. she's chanting to it. And he said, when she did it, that was the era she grew up in mm -hmm. and that's to be expected from someone her age. That mm -hmm. didn't bother me. But mm -hmm. when the young guys did it, mm -hmm. that was very pointed and very mm -hmm. uh, deliberate, mm -hmm. and that hurt. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's really interesting. So, what he's and and what he said and what this other uh, person, uh, Jade Snow, said, was that it was okay if African Americans said it, mm -hmm. but white people can't. Mm -hmm. And I thought. I'm, I, I'm not willing to yeah. risk that. But that was coming out of Don's hand. You know what I'm saying? Don was kind of like leading it on. I don't know, but I, I didn't. I didn't get to hear you. Don say that. I, I personally, I don't want to hear it out of anybody's yeah, I mouth. I understand. I understand. I mean, but we got to do something. I mean, my point is that it's there. There were too many people in in of my ancestors, right. direct and indirect, who died, and the last thing they heard was that word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That word has a lot of power for mm -hmm. me, and I do not want, I don't take that word casually. But how do we, but again, the same thing, it's there. Now, so what do we do? I mean, you know, we are, and right, we, have, we have the benefit, if you will, of being able to talk about this subject right now, because in all due respect, President Obama happens to be black, an African-American aspect of it. We're discussing the issue of race, fair? Now is the time, if there's going to be a solution, it has to be done now. You said fine. You said you said uh, when the fine. music industry changes, okay, then it will change. The music industry is run by whites. Right. The people making the music are who are making these rap songs and such are African American. Mm -hmm. When it when the music industry gets fined, and again, uh, unfortunately, this is one of those governmental things. So that who's going to find people? Yeah, no, it has to be the government. And do yeah. you want the government and coming in and controlling and, and running the things? So that's the and of so this is, you know, when people, the, and the majority of people who buy rap music are white kids. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So these, this isn't even African Americans who who are making it, who are buy, you know, who people who look like me. Yeah. We're not buying that music. But I tell you what, I tell you what, you're gonna have to come back. You know, do respect because there's a lot of issues in the tape. That's a major piece. I'd like for us to just spend a whole, uh, just a whole hour, just on that particular issue, and maybe we, let's think about that, and we'll get back to the public here with this. End. Okay. I got about another two minutes at most, maybe about a minute and a half, and I really want to talk a little bit about this forum that's coming up. Okay. I want you to share that with me, and then you are gonna come back. Yes. After you've had the forum, and we'll talk about it a little bit more. And maybe so. We'll get to, um, in November, we had um, a Race Talks 2 forum entitled uh, Ferguson, Missouri, Could Portland Be Next? Okay. And we had the assistant police chief, um, Michael Krebs, come and speak, mm -hmm. uh, along with a couple of attorneys who had a phone app called Driving While Black mm -hmm. to help people know what their rights were and what they needed to do while driving. And... Um, after this was prior to the verdict of Ferguson coming out, and so at the time he was quite taken that at race talk, people were um, one of the things that we believe in is that you have the right to to 
to have difference of opinion. Mm -hmm. So he was quite taken with how the recep what the reception was of the police. So I said, well, we need to do something about this. Yeah. And after the Ferguson verdict came out, then we decided we would do a one. series of forums. So this next year and a half, we're going to do forums all Good. over Portland Good. at all of the high schools. You got involved Daryl Turner, who happens to be president of the Portland Police Union. Well, Daryl Turner has been invited, and he was supposed to speak at the first two. Daryl will be there. Daryl will be there. I'm hoping to see I know Daryl will be one. there. I mean, he's got a lot of work, though. You got to understand. He's got. He's got to. I'm sure he does. Got to I'm hoping sure to see him at the third troops, one. You know, he's a he's the first sergeant. You know, the, I'm hoping uh, to see the, him the at the third one. The CO happens to be the mayor, but a lot of folks don't understand that. Now, right. I'm going to get that. We're going to be doing some. In fact, we're going to be doing some things about police here, and we've got a former retired policeman who's going to be on, and we're going to talk about police work and this, that, and the other, and sort of give a feel a bit better, a little education about what 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 is police work. Okay. Right. Okay. Hey, this has been just great. Well, and thank you. Always, it's, it's always grace, and, and hopefully I will be at this particular forum. And, and like I said, you will hopefully come back, okay, during that particular time. Again, we want to thank you, Don, Donna. And what's that, what's that phone number again? 971-222-8254. And by the way, and if you've got any background, and if you want to know where, the, where this is going to happen, et cetera, et cetera, call up Portland Public Schools. Be well, uh, it's on the Portland Public Schools Pulse and Sounds also great. McMiniman's Kennedy School as something there. All right. Thank you, folks. I'll see you next week. You have a good one, okay? Take care.